Hello everybody, welcome to tonight and I hope you're going to enjoy talking about the Angel of Nature, Archangel Kalimik and the elementals that he's in command of. And please do send your questions in. Oh, I'm just going to try something. No, I'm trying to make it bigger, but I've made it smaller. Okay, try and send your questions in so that I can see them and, and reply. I've had some on email, which is lovely. And so Archangel Perlimik has come in from another universe. Hello, Melody. Lovely to see you as ever. Has come in from another universe to help us with our transfer to the new golden age. And it, he is the most amazing color. Now, I have got one of him, but I've got an orb which actually has pearly me and Gabriel. Now, you can see it's Gabriel from the lines round here. The lines, ooh, I can never do this in the mirror. The lines round here, so it's Gabriel with it. And Uriel, you can tell from the little lumps like pearl knitting in the middle. And when you look at this particular orb of Archangel Pelini, Archangel Gabriel, and Uriel, an angel of love, and various spirits that gives you confidence to work with nature. This photo was sent by Kelly some time ago, so I hope you're what we care about me showing it, Kelly. But it is so perfect. People can look at this orb and start getting confidence to work with nature and all that nature has to offer. Because it is amazing. Nature is earth. It is just so incredible. And Jonathan has asked, I find myself attracted to pink flowers. It's like they pull me towards them. And I get the feeling that birds are trying to communicate with me. Please tell me what these beings are trying to say. Well, pink flowers are to do with the many different frequencies of love. From the deepest creative pink to the very palest pink and the cherry pink, cherry blossom pink, which is the romantic pink, the pink of love. And every different shade of pink is touching you in a different way. And obviously your heart is being drawn to that essence. And remember that flowers are incredibly important. They are literally helping our ascension. They wake us up. They make us feel so much better. When you admire a flower, it gives them energy. And it also gives you energy too. Never think a flower is just something that's there. That flower is pouring energy into you. You may remember the days where you took flowers into hospitals and it raised the frequency of the patients to help them heal more quickly. Now they say it's too dusty and too many petals and too annoying. And so Tammy says, hi, I'm being guided to go to the Bahamas. I assume this is related to Atlantis. Any thoughts? Well, sure, yes. And at the Bahamas, you've got that amazing roadway under the ocean, which is said to be connected with that ancient time. And so when you go there, just relax and chill and try and allow the energy in the place to come to you and wake up things that are waiting to come forward ancient wisdom and love and peace and all sorts of qualities from atlantis and also when you go there you see the dolphins and often the whales and they too are downloading information from atlantis to you when they come through so quickly i can't always see who it is now here's a really sad question i've been asked um please can we help the trees in sheffield 
Now Sheffield is a town in England and the council in Sheffield has apparently subcontracted a two billion pound project to repair Sheffield's roads and pavements and part of this work destroys thousands of trees they are to be felled. So far 6,000 trees have been taken out, some as old as 100 to 150 years old. That's really, really sad. And local people are trying their best, but they need an in intervention. And I am sure that the angels are really trying to help. So keep asking the angels. And if everybody here would just for one moment close their eyes, and ask the angels of nature to go to that place in Sheffield and communicate with the councillors, with the people taking decision, with the trees in the area to make a decision for the highest good of all. My feeling was that there's a lot of resistance. I um, hope I'm wrong. But when we ask the angels to go somewhere to help a tree, it can make a difference. I remember being sent a fabulous orb of Archangel Pearly Meat, and he was streaking through the picture. And I asked my guide, Kimiko, what that was about. And he said, oh, he is going to talk to somebody who is about to fell a tree and that tree does not need to come down and pearly meat whispered in the guy's ear and he heard him i probably didn't consciously hear anything but he didn't fell that tree and it can make a difference and i think i wrote in my newsletter this month that i was in the woods once and i i just had this horrible feeling and I could feel the trees crying and screaming and I thought I don't know what's going on and when I got there they'd been kind of torn and a lot had been felled and they hadn't been warned to withdraw their energy because if you warn a tree it doesn't have to be very long just tell it and it'll withdraw its energy from that place that's going to be cut so that it doesn't feel the energetic pain that it would otherwise. And I did talk to the guy who was in charge of it all and explain that trees are sentient beings and that if you treat them with respect and honor them, if you have to fell them, but you actually treat them with respect as you do so, that it will make a huge difference. And I asked if he could feel the energy in the area. Now, he was very polite, but he was clearly thinking I was nuts. And I went to another woodland where they were clearing trees with respect. Obviously, the people there had some understanding. And do you know what? The trees were felled, but they were, but the feeling in the place was completely different. Now, what it feels really important to do in Sheffield is to campaign for replacement trees to be planted so that at least if they've taken these trees out, something is being replaced for Earth and for future generations. So I'm sorry I can't be more helpful, but the more energy we send to the trees, the better, because they are amazing beings. Another thing I do and it's reminded me because I haven't done this for a while but I used to when I walked in the forest I used to call in energies beautiful high frequency energies to come down to the trees I used to call in the gold and silver violet flame and the Christ light and it would go right down through the trees out through the roots and of course all trees are connected and so the roots of the trees would connect with other ones and it would spread that high frequency light 
throughout the forest. Now we can all do this. And I think that's really lovely if we can. Now I was so privileged recently to be given some of Louise Hay's ashes and asked to plant a tree in my garden, which I did. And I found a beautiful weeping cherry tree because it seemed to me that that pink and that lovely glowing of the cherry tree represented her work. And as we had a little ceremony with candles round it, as we planted the tree, I was thinking how the roots of that tree would then take her work and her understandings and her memory out to all the trees in the area and beyond. And it's, it's really good when we can do this. So, should we be cutting flowers? Flowers are here in service, as we all are, and they serve by giving their beautiful energy. Now, if you ask a flower if you may cut it, and you obviously have an, an impression that the answer is yes, then cut it, but take it meaningfully and gratefully and place it where the energy can go out and touch other people. And that makes a difference. I was, I've told this story before, but I had a couple of friends. One of them was walking across the road when she saw a daffodil that had been dropped in the street. And she picked it up and she took it to her friend's house. And they'd nest it and put it in some water. And the light came out of that tree, out of that daffodil, and straight across the room and into their hearts. And that was the daffodil saying thank you. And I've had many experiences with flowers doing that sort of thing. And they will send their energy to raise the frequency. And on one occasion, this was many, many, many years ago, and when I very, very first started on my journey and when I was feeling a very wimpy little thing, and I, uh, I used to bless the plants in my house every day. And I had a beautiful hanging fern in my office. And this guy that I quite fancied had said something really hurtful to me and I felt lock and chain go around my heart. And I was watching that plant and you know, all the plants in the house sent energy to it. And then it sent a burst of energy and broke open the lock and chain around my heart. They are doing all sorts of things for us, if only we realised. Ah, somebody says Nadine, in her healing session, the therapist put a pink white rose at her feet and this opened her heart and she buys flowers every week and she needs them. And that's probably the answer to your question about should you pick flowers. They really help us, they support us and they raise our frequency and open our heart. How can we help support the tree? asked Joelle. Is that how you say your name, Joelle? And what elementals work with them? Well, one of the ways you can support the trees is by hugging them. I, again, I think I told this story about when we had the gale in 1987. And... Um, I knew this man who had two little girls, and they used to go up the, to this hill, and they each had a tree that they chose, and they used to go and hug their special tree. And when we had that huge gale, every single tree on that hilltop went over, except their two trees. And the little girl said to me, is it our love that kept them safe? And of course, the answer was yes. It is very powerful for strengthening any creature, any being, and a tree is a sentient being. So giving your love to the trees is a really big way of helping them. And then, as I said, if you pass a tree and you just visualize the gold ray of Christ 
pouring down through it and into the roots or the violet flame or the Mahatma energy or any energy that you feel intuitively that that tree and that area needs. And if you do that, you are helping that tree and other trees. Now, the other part of the question was about the elementals that work with the trees, and that's the elves. So they are earth elementals and they really help the trees. And of course, fairies who are air elemental help the flowering blossom on the trees. Somebody here, Cindy, has asked, can I speak about the lesser known elementals like the elves, the dwarfs and the trolls? I don't know much anything about the trolls. I have a feeling that they work with some of the denser energies. And my guide would never give me information about anything that worked with the denser energies like that. The goblins. I've often told the story of how I walked in the forest and this elemental jumped out and it was quite tall and it walked along beside me. And we had a very weird conversation because I stupidly said to it, well, what do you think about humans? <laughs> and it said to me very oddly, and he said, well, we're the same, but we're different. And I said, well, what about the other elementals? And he again looked at me oddly and he said, we're the same, but we're different. But when he looked at me, that goblin opened his arms, opened his heart, and a burst of pure white light came went flooding into my heart. I don't think I've ever experienced anything like it. It was a real, real surprise. And this is because goblins have had a very bad press, but they are fifth dimensional elementals. And of course they're called elementals because they have the four elements, or they don't have all the four elements of earth, air, fire and water. They have um, one of them, two or three, but they don't have all four like humans do. And they're ethereal beings. But goblins are fully fifth dimensional and they seem to do so much work. I met my goblin all over the place. When I was in Findholm once, he was really busy and he was with three other two other goblins, sorry, there were three of them, and they were with other goblins from Fintorn, two from my area and two, um, some from Fintorn, which is where I was, and they were working on the ley lines, making the connection between those places. He also came with me to South Africa. <laughs> he sat on the, in the empty seat on the plane beside me, and when I was walking, in a beautiful place by a lake. Oh, I looked round and there he was. And so they help the world, the earth, the connections, the communications, they are absolutely amazing. And the gnomes, they are very tiny, I mean really tiny. And they work deep in the earth with the soil and the rocks and they're very shy. You hardly ever see a um, no, apparently, they just don't appear. I've never seen one. And so the goblins, the elves, gnomes are earth elementals. And the air elementals are the sylphs who work with flowers and plants and they clear the pollution around plants and flowers so that they can um, grow and blossom much more easily. They also enable the sunlight to enter their leaves. And they love to fly with the wind. It's the silks that come along and help to blow cobwebs out of your mind, along with air dragons, of course, who are also elementals. The fairies are element, air elementals. And one that not many people know about, though I write about them in my Enlightenment Through Orbs book, are the Isak. Now, because there was so much pollution on the planet, this must have been about 2012, Archangel Metatron sent to other universes, sent a call out basically, asking 
to oh you can't hear can i increase the volume i don't know very hard to hear can anyone tell me where the volume is because i can't see anything here with volume if i talk more loudly is it better If I talk more loudly, can anyone answer that? Can you hear me better? No. <laughs> no. Okay. I'm talking about these sacks, and I'll take this question if I remember about chestnuts and trees, which are all about abundance and fun. And trying to talk more loudly. Anyone answering that question? No. So this clarion call went out into the universe for elementals who would come to Earth and clear the pollution, consume it in exchange for growing on Earth and being able to take all the knowledge they earned back to their home planets and universes. And Isaacs came in, teeny, teeny, teeny little elementals, millions and millions of them. They're air elementals and they are consuming all the negativity we leave around. If there's a party with lots of drug and alcohol, then you'll see lots and lots of insects there clearing that pollution. And at the same time, some water elementals came in called kaihils, and they do exactly the same job in the oceans. And they are helping to clear the pollution in the oceans to consume the oil and all the other horrible pollutants. And they are doing an amazing job. And so all these beings have come with love for Earth to try and help us to get better. And everybody loves the, the trees and the, the bees, of course, are working with the flowers and the trees and the elemental that helps them is the pixies. So the pixies travel with the bees, they help them, and they also help to structure the soil, help with their soil, soil erosion. And they are wandering bands, you don't find them all in one place. They move around. In the water, there is also, oh, is there any place I can recommend to go to in Findhorn. Well, the place I've been to is the Findhorn community, which I'm sure you've heard of, the most amazing spiritual community in Findhorn. It's very, very big, but they grow everything totally organically with love and communication with the elementals. And many, many years ago when it started, they became really well known for the absolutely enormous vegetables that they grew with very little other than love. <laughs> My grandmother's dog was very ill and I saw how elementals that live in her garden make a healing circle around her and help her heal. As they say, they like to lie down close to her and take sun baths together. I was sorry about her being ill. Isn't that lovely? Isn't that fantastic? Let's remember that when we love nature, when you love gardening, when you are just lovely to your flowers, when you just appreciate your flowers, they respond and they really help you. There's one coming up. I often get a white rose from the, and I can't read the next word. It's not gone up yet. Okay, have I done, oh, fire. I haven't done the fire elementals. And that of course is the salamanders and the fire dragons. Oh, that's Valkyria. I often get a white rose from the spirit world. And where's it gone? Any thoughts what it means? Of course, roses are about love. The rose was Mother Mary's flower and it represents pure love. And of course, white is the symbol of purity. So. A pure white rose is about love. And a pure white doggy is also about love, aren't you? Yes. She is 
she doesn't like coming up like this. She would much rather snuff it around me and just see if there's anything I've left for her. <laughs> so imps are mixed elementals. They are earth, air and water. They're quite small and they aerate the soil. And I think the last one of the unusual ones, oh, I've often seen a, a tiny green orb when we take pictures of my daughter at the beach. Could this be an elemental of water? It could be if you take it in the water. Um, otherwise, it could be any of the elementals that are, that are around just playing with her. It could be a, a little fairy or something like that. If you, if you get a picture of an orb, of a, sorry, Venus, please move, a fairy orb, it's like a little tiny round circle, and sometimes just a dot in the photograph. Fawns. I've only once seen a fawn, and that was at Finthorn, where the veils are very thin between the worlds. That's, that's why it's so special to go to a place like that, because you you can connect more easily with the other worlds. And the forms, they really work with um, photosynthesis. They balance the energy of the forest through photosynthesis. And so they, they are amazing. There's one more elemental I haven't mentioned. I can hear you just fine. Oh, thank you so much. Um, I've stopped the background noise. I bet I know what it was. I bet I had a piece of paper on the on. I still have to move it on my laptop. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you for telling me that you can hear me better. Oh, brilliant. It seems ridiculous if nobody can hear me chattering away. Um, and that's a little elemental called a whirl, of which very few people have heard of. Now, as you know, when you pass over, normally an angel will come to you and help you pass over. But if you are stuck, you're in shock, you don't want to go, you're very connected to the earth, then an angel can't get to you because your frequency is down here. And so a world, which is an elemental, will look after you and stay with you until you see the light and can pass into the light. So we're never alone. There's always somebody, some being with us, helping us. So, shall I read a dragon card for somebody? Now, Melody, would you like a dragon card? Got the silver lunar dragon bathes you in divine feminine light you come helps you to come into balance which is really important and practice peace harmony and cooperation now it also expands your causal chakra your causal chakra is the one above your head which is like your own personal moon can see the moon here because these are oracle cards telling you what it can do for you and this dragon will help you to work with your causal chakra which is one single chamber of peace it's like a peace chamber it is your entry to the angelic kingdom the unicorn world and so when you pick this dragon, you also work with Archangel Christiel, and that will help you. And I have to say, I have to put a little plug in now. I was so lucky this morning. I had a lovely long chat with Tim Wilde, who's an old friend of mine. We've written a couple of books together. And on Sunday, the 25th of February, that's a couple of weeks' time, we're going to do a Zoom course together and prepare from eight o'clock to ten o'clock it's not announced yet it will be on my facebook i expect preparing for the next wave of ascension energy I'm very very excited about it we've got lots and lots of really fascinating things to talk about and how oh, at the moment 
the energy is really quite intense on earth there are so many high frequencies pouring in that people have to somehow take them into their systems and this of course is why there is so much so many problems in the world so much turmoil and so when we work with the higher energies when we start to absorb them and connect with them at another level then it's much easier to deal with them on earth and so we will be connecting with archangel christiel that card just reminded me and we will go with him to the stargate of lyra to take in and absorb some of the amazing energies coming in also I know many of you have heard of our king of the great master Ruslu, who's a 12th dimensional master. Now he came into the planet from another universe at the time of Mu, and he helped that civilization to ascend. He comes in at critical times when there is to be a leap in consciousness. It was he who came into Atlantis as the highest frequency high priest that's ever been in Atlantis. And he helped with that leap that took them into the specialness of the golden age. And he's come back to earth right now. And so we're going to do some work helping you to connect with him to receive the keys and codes to help you jump shift your ascension so that you're completely ready for the new golden age i think that's awesome and kimika and the mighty katumi they have got new messages at a higher frequency to give us and we are going to be working with the ninth dimensional frequency of the pleiadian rose and look at the steps to bring back your crystalline body so that you can accept the blueprint for your divine self in the new golden age i think it's going to be very exciting so if you can join us put it in your diary it's on the between 8 and 10 on the 25th and we will be putting a notice up now this is a proper paid two hour workshop and uh, it's going to be really special now there's quite a few questions came have come in before i do it i'm going to just pick up this one jane would like a dragon card so let me just quickly oops that one's fallen out so let's take it air and water dragon now this was about your health and the air and water dragon helps you connect to higher frequencies it helps you to trust your intuition, develop your psychic abilities, be open to enlightenment and express your inner song. Now, why this dragon literally let out of the pack for you, Jen, is that all illnesses are at a lower frequency and the solutions are at a higher frequency. Now the angels take up this, help you to move up to this higher level, but so did the dragons. This dragon is coming to say, let me help you to tune in to what's going on, raise your frequency, and then you can get back into proper health again. I mean, we are living at a time when the health service cannot cope because we're focusing so much on illness, clearing so much karma, instead of focusing on health and our spiritual selves, which would take us all to that higher frequency where we don't need so much. Now, we say this, and I had cancer last year, and I'm very grateful to the health service. It took me through what I needed to clear and what I did for the collective and cleared that out and so I am not saying anything against our amazing health service. I'm just saying that we all need to start raising our frequency so that we can glow with health again.
just as they did in golden era Atlantis. Now, Manassi says, why are there so many dragons in her vision nowadays? The answer is that, especially since 2015, the dragons have been pouring in. 2012, the main dragon portals of Andorra, Honolulu and Lemuria opened and dragons started to pour in. But now the higher frequency ones are coming in as well. And there are more dragons than humans on our planet right now. So this is why you're seeing so many of them. Oh, Susan, bless you. Thank you. She says, I look radiant. Oh, thanks very much. <laughs> so true about the actual energies. This is from Nadine. I saw so many patterns that it got too harsh. And I closed until my solar plexus hurt. Right. It, this, yes, talking about these high frequency energies coming in. Now, if you are possibly a low frequency person and you're closed down, it may not have that impact on you. But most people now are opening up and it's knocking people sideways. And a lot of the horrible acts that are taking place are simply because people are knocked sideways. We have to help them absorb the energies more easily. I have no idea. Are these? Oh, do I know the white priesthood? Yes, yes, of course. The white priesthood and the white brotherhood and any white organization is connected to total purity. The Cathars, the Essenes, there are many, many of them. They are all part of the White Brotherhood or the Great White Brotherhood. And their aim is total purity. And one way you can help yourself is to ask Serapis Bay to bring the pure white flame of Atlantis and place it over your energy fields. So, if you make yourself still and centered, and then ask Serapis Bay to place the pure white flame of Atlantis over you, you will be receiving now pure white energy into your aura. And just let that pure white flame go through your spiritual body, your mental body, emotional body, etheric and physical bodies. A nice deep breath. And just relax. And, wow, I've not had this happen before. There are angels above every single person doing this at this moment. And they are humming a note to you. This may be beyond your auditory range. The vibration is touching you. And so, thank the angels and Serapis Bay. And no, that at this moment, that pure white light is working in your aura, helping to purify you. Now, somebody here is saying, I feel deeply connected with animals. I can communicate with them through heart. This is from Martina Benesova. And she and her husband have a small farm and they want to treat the animals well and show other people in their country, which is, I think, South Africa, what I can do for it. 
it's Africa anyway. Um, which angel fairy archangel can help? Well, all the elementals will help you. And of course, the nature is helped by Archangel Polyne. The angel of animals is Archangel Felier, F-H-E-L-Y-A-I. And he is a beautiful sunshine yellow color. And so just calling him in to touch the animals will help them. He puts his light into them and gives them a feeling of security and safety. And he has dragons and angels that work with him. And the dragons, beautiful, they shelter and shield the animals in their wings and, and help them to feel safe. So call on them and ask them. Uh, she'd like to share her connection with gold dragon since last year. Ah, and it fills her with the love of Jesus. Well, that is the Christ light and that's the golden Christed dragon. Very, very special and beautiful. And I'm so glad that you're connected with that. And she wanted to ask about white lions and she feels a very deep connection. Well, the white lions carry a very high frequency level of the Christ light. They have come in especially to bring a surge of Christ light into the planet and into the animal kingdom especially. And when you talk about a white lion or you think about one or you see a picture of one, then it touches your consciousness and changes you. So they're bringing in peace and humility and calm and gentleness and all those beautiful qualities and they are incredibly special. And, um, oh, apparently I wrote about llamas. They don't have any contract with their owners to eat them. That sounds very strange. I'm, there are no animals on earth ever that have had a contract that they would allow themselves to be eaten, except very rarely later on for the Native American Indians and people like that who absolutely respected and honored them and asked that an animal from the herd would present itself to sustain them. And they are the only, only ones. It is not part of our original contract with animals that we eat their flesh. Ah, oh, now here is another question that's come in from Natasha. And this is a question that's come through several times, which is about the drought in Cape Town, the shortage of water. This is actually for a forerunner for what is happening in the planet and will happen more and more in the future. And I think that what we have to do is honor the water and ask Oh, somebody's already signed up today for Tim Wilde's. Oh, no, this is a different one. He's doing an Atlantean crystal workshop. Oh, so brilliant. Enjoy it. And then do join our joint one because it will be fabulous. Oh, somebody here. Before I do that, here we are. I'm going to pick you a unicorn card, Amanda. She's having a medical problem with her heart. So here's a unicorn card for you. And oh, here it is. Act on your soul purpose today. What I'm getting told is that your heart, medical problem with your heart is because you're not doing your proper soul mission. You know, when people are on their soul pathway, truly connected with soul satisfaction and soul joy, then their heart gets healthier again. Their heart is a reflection of what's going on in your levels of happiness, joy, and soul satisfaction. So ask the unicorns who work with soul energy 
to help you find your soul pathway, to connect with it and step onto it. And if you do this and you really connect with the unicorns all the time and keep asking them and focusing on that and focusing on joy in your heart, I think you'll find there's a difference. Hope so. Bless you. Oh, hello, Erica. Yes, I shall be in Finland on Saturday and really looking forward to seeing everybody in Helsinki. And I've got some very exciting work to do with the dragons. And then I'm giving a lecture in the afternoon again on the dragons. And again, I've got some new things to bring forward so that we can connect at a higher level to the dragons. I'm really, really looking forward to it. I never finished what I was saying about Cape Town. I'm sorry, I keep looking at the questions and answering those. Um, Africa is a very, very special place. In the golden age of Africa called Petranium, which was the second golden age on the planet, the land glowed gold. It was throughout Africa, it was verdant, it was bright, it was amazing. There were seventh dimensional beings, of course they weren't physical on the planet then, and many of them are still in Africa now trying to persuade people to live in a different way. And the Table Mountain, and I hear that there's talk about drilling into it for water, which is, is really not, not on. It's an absolute no-no because that is a very, very sacred mountain. And it's connected with abundance for Africa. And when enough people wake up and Table Mountain wakes up, it is going to radiate that abundance through Africa. Now, abundance also means having enough water. And I think that this is about connecting with the elementals the and asking them to the elemental master of water there's poseidon and there's neptune connecting with them and asking them to bring rain to cape town visualizing it staying very centered visualizing the elementals bringing the clouds and the rain in so that the grass can grow, the trees can be nurtured, and the whole of the animal kingdom can receive what they need and the humans too. And if enough people do it, and let's do it now, let's absolutely ground ourselves, Center ourselves, stay in a total, centered, calm space. And focus on South Africa, the solar plexus of our planet. A place that is really needing our attention and our love. And we invoke Poseidon in charge of the water element and Neptune, the elemental master of water. And we visualize now clouds, rain clouds gathering over South Africa. And rain falling. Rain filling the reservoirs. Rain flowing into the rivers. Let's visualize the trees 
rooting down and sucking up lots of water. Flowers raising their heads and carpets of flowers everywhere. Animals finding water, pure, clear water to drink. And people turning on their taps and water flowing from the tap. We thank all the water elementals. We thank the element of water. We see South Africa green. And then open your eyes and remember that everything responds to our thoughts and our emotions. If enough people, <coughs> excuse me, if enough people send out the energy for it to happen, it will happen. And each person can just put in their drop and then it must rain. In ancient times, they knew exactly how to bring the water and have exactly the right amount of rain. This is what they did in the golden era of Atlantis. The rain would come at night. It would be the perfect amount of rain so that the land was always green and abundant and all the, the plants and the vegetables grew. We can do this. I'm sure that there are many of you that have visualized blue sky when you wanted a, a, the rain to stop for a special event, and it has done so. You've done that? Just let us know. And I'm sure that a lot of you have also called in rain, and it has rained. And you've stopped fires by asking the salamanders to, just to calm down. And all of these things have to respond to human thoughts and emotions. While meditating this week, I had a black panther, elephant and cheetah come to visit. <laughs> How lovely. So, lovely fifth dimensional beings all coming to tell you that you're special. So what should we have? Should we have a dragon card for you? That's for Marcia. And of course this is for anybody else as well. Okay Marcia, what is that? <laughs> now, this is what you've got. Thor's red, black and gold dragon protects you in times of change. It tells you that you're going through a rapid transformation to relax and that you are safe. And the fact that you've had these high frequency creatures coming to you would suggest that you are really going on a big transition now into a higher frequency. Take care of yourself. Just know that when you have a lot of high energies around, you need to rest, to absorb it. I think I'm talking to myself here. You need to give yourself time and space to absorb those energies. Another question that came through on my email was, I'm experiencing skin allergy from Debiani. Um, and he's had, or she's had steroids and is doing fine, but then after a month, the skin has become dry and scratchy. And she's an energy healer and doing professional energy healing. 
so what can she do? The question I would ask for any skin thing is, what's irritating me? Who is annoying me? And then take action to change that. You know, sometimes we get so used to that little irritating person or that thing that we keep having to do that's actually not serving us anymore, that we forget that it's our body is telling us about it. It's saying, wake up, wake up. It, this is irritating you. And as soon as you then take action and change it, the skin naturally responds. Our whole body is a barometer telling us everything about our lives. It is completely amazing. Right, it is now time just for me to remind you that next week we is Valentine's Day. And so we're going to talk about the rose pink dragons, who are the dragons of romantic love, and Archangel Chamuel, the angel of love, and all the questions concerning the pink energies of the planet. And that Tim and I, Tim Wilde, are going to do a workshop in Zoom about preparing for the next wave of Ascension Energy. And that's on the 25th, Sunday from 8 to 10 GMT in the evening. And it's going to be completely awesome. And the information isn't out yet, but it will be in Facebook and on my website and Tim's website soon. So I've really, really enjoyed as always talking to all of you. You're so special going to leave you with the dragon card so I'm just going to leave you with the dragon card it's all keep sending energy to the trees to Cape Town and to helping our entire planet get better and here's the card for the week the emerald dragon brings healing and cosmic abundance good fortune is coming let your thoughts support your divine perfection. Align with your fifth dimensional blueprint. So, fantastic. I love the green, emerald green dragon. Archangel Raphael works with him, works with your third eye, works with healing. And when you call him in, amazing things happen. So remember... Dragon card for the week. Lots of love to everybody. Remember, you can still send in to dianacooper.com, mark Angel Inspiration Time, and someone can pick those questions out and then I can answer them live. So, lovely to see you. Take care of yourself and have a good week. And see some of you, I hope, in Helsinki on Saturday and Sunday. Bye.